Flying a helicopter on Mars with atmospheric pressure less than 1% that of Earth's seems to defy physics, but a vacuum chamber and a toy helicopter provide an opportunity to understand how ingenuity makes it work on this Mars Lab episode of Mars Guy. Ingenuity has now completed 67 flights on Mars with another one scheduled for today. It only needed to demonstrate controlled flight on Mars using five test flights of increasing height and distance during the month of April back in 2021. Obviously, it has exceeded its mission requirements, but the physics of helicopter flight in an atmosphere with 7 to 8 millibars of pressure compared to Earth's 1,000 millibars was already demonstrated in a giant vacuum chamber at the Jet Propulsion Lab. But I wanted to try this at home. In previous episodes, I've used this small vacuum chamber, which I gratuitously call Mars Lab, to get a better sense of what the Martian environment is like. For example, that water boils at room temperature at Mars pressure. I figured I could use it to show that a toy helicopter with some modifications could be made to fly at Mars pressure. Here's what that looks like at ambient conditions, so zero pressure difference between inside and outside the box. Note that the rotors barely fit inside and have scratched the walls. As expected, the helicopter can lift off, but then it promptly lost control despite my effort to tether it from below. I expected that it wouldn't fly at Mars pressure, which proved to be true. So I figured if I made it lighter by removing any extraneous parts, I could get it to fly. The tail rotor is only needed to change direction, and the landing gear and cockpit aren't needed for this flight. After discovering these cuts weren't enough, I stripped it down to just the rotors and their motors and gears. Here's what that looks like. It ain't pretty, but it's as light as it can possibly be, 19 grams, including its new landing gear. It does indeed still fly at earth pressure, this time tethered by its wires connecting to the battery and electronics. I thought for sure this lightweighted version would be able to fly at Mars pressure. And here's what that looked like. 800 pascals is 8 millibars. I gave it full power from the start, which probably makes about 2500 RPM, but there was no lift. It just sat there, only rotating a bit on its axis as the contra-rotating rotors balanced out the rotational torque. After power down, it's impressive to see how long the top rotor takes to spin down, an indication of how little drag there is in the thin air. At this point, I started to wonder how it's possible for ingenuity to fly. Here's Mars Guy for scale, especially given that it has about five times more weight to lift relative to its rotor length than the Frankencopter I made. But then I realized rotor velocity has to be considered. The rotors of both Ingenuity and Frankencopter spin at about 2500 RPM, but at 185 millimeters long, the speed of Frankencopter's blade tips is only 24 meters per second, compared to Ingenuity's 1200 millimeter long rotors with blade tips going 158 meters per second, six times faster, giving it way more lift. Frankencopter would need longer rotors and or higher RPMs to fly at Mars pressure. The idea of increasing lift by increasing rotor length and RPM is exactly what the engineers at JPL are working on. In this test at Mars pressure, the blades are 10 centimeters longer than Ingenuity's and they're spinning at 3,500 RPM. That means the tip speed is 0.95 Mach, nearly supersonic, or about 250 meters per second. So the next generation Mars helicopter will have more lift to carry more payload. But my efforts to fly a helicopter in Mars Lab have reached an end. <laughs>